Okay, so we're continuing to look at linear independence. So where were we? Ah, we had figured out that this set was linearly dependent because this linear combination gives you zero. Another question. Is a singleton set, V1, linearly dependent or independent? Okay, and so you should think about that for yourself then. Well, we are looking for solutions to the equation A1, V1 equals zero. If the vector V1 is not equal to zero, then the only solution is A1 equals zero, and the set is linearly independent. On the other hand, if V1 equals zero, then any value of A1 satisfies the equation, so the set is linearly dependent. Okay, so according to the definition they've used, where the set is dependent if there's a non-trivial solution to linear combination equal to zero, that makes it clear why the sets, a set with just one element is independent if the vector in it is non-zero, but dependent if it's zero. I think I previously I said that I like to think of independence as being as saying that if a set is dependent, then some vector in it can be written as a linear combination of other vectors in it. Now, of course, if there's only one vector in the set, right, then that vector cannot be written as a linear combination of other vectors in the set because there are no other vectors in the set, except for the case when we have just the set containing the zero vector, okay, because then what we can say is that zero is actually equal to a linear combination of no vectors. So what I mean is, we're taking a linear combination, you can write it as a sum, right? So I'm going to use this sigma notation to write a sum, okay? So the sum from i equals, say, 1 to n, okay, of these coefficients, some coefficients a i and some vectors v i, right? Okay. Now, of course, this equation is true when well, one, one way in which this equation is true is if all the a i are zero, zero, of course, okay? And that will hold for any number of a i. So, for example, from if we have just if we have just one a i, right? So now this is the sum from i equals one to one. So of course it's just got a one term in it, a one v one, okay? But what about a sum from i equals one to zero, so to speak? That is a sum with no terms in it. So this is a sum now with no terms in it. What should it equal? If you think about it it ought to equal zero. Why? Because zero is like the identity for addition. If you add, if you add something, if you add, if you add something to something, you know, it changes it, right? If you add zero to it, it doesn't change it. So adding zero is the same as adding nothing. So an empty linear combination, a linear combination of no vectors at all, is actually equal to the zero vector. So. If this set, S, has just a zero vector in it, then zero can be written as a linear combination of other vectors in the set. It can be written as a linear combination of no vectors, right? So, now, if that seems silly to you, then it's all right. All you have to remember is that we think of the vector zero as always being dependent, okay? The vector zero is always dependent. So if the set contains zero, it's dependent. Whereas if a set contains just one vector, which isn't zero, then it's, then it's independent because that vector cannot be written as a linear combination of, the, of, of other vectors in the set. Okay. Dependent. Okay. Uh, now another example. Is the set S containing 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 5, 2, 3, minus 1 linearly dependent or independent? So they said that they solved the previous one by inspection, and we didn't. We just trusted what they said, or we actually verified what they said. Okay. There isn't an obvious linear combination of these three vectors that produces a zero vector. We might suspect that this is linearly independent, but to show that this is the case, we will do some Gauss reduction. Consider the equation. So remember now, for us, this equation comes from, we want to see if we can get alpha, beta, and find a solution to this, which is alpha, beta, and gamma, where they're not all zero, because then whichever one has a scale that's not zero, that can be taken to the other side and divide through, and then we have that vector in terms of other vectors. So 
if this thing has any solution with not these all not zero, then we'll say the set is dependent. Okay. So how do we solve this? Again, I'm not going to use the augmented matrix notation. I don't like it. So this matrix multiplication is defined, of course, as take a linear combination of the columns. So those two things are. So those two equations are equivalents. So now we Gauss reduce. Uh, so just do it yourself. Maybe pause the video and try to do it yourself. Once you've paused it, come back. Once you've done it, come back and see if you agree with me or if you did something slightly different from me, but if you got the same result. So let's check it. Uh, let me do it um, for myself. Uh, so let's do R2 minus, sorry, let's do row 2 minus 2 times row 1, and let's do row 3 minus 3 times row 1. Okay, so we're going to get 1, 4, 2, 0, uh, minus 8, so minus 7, then 3, minus 4, minus 1, so it's minus 1, then we get here we get 0, then 5, minus 12, right, 5 minus 12, 5 minus 12 is minus 7, and then we get minus 1, minus 6, that's also minus 7, and then we still have the alpha beta gamma, and the zero is unaffected, of course, by any of these operations. Now we could do row three minus row two. Okay, then we're going to get the same setup. We're going to get the first row is, unaffected, is unchanged, second row is unchanged, third row now becomes zero, zero, and we have minus seven plus one, so we have minus six. Okay. That's the same as what they have over here. Then it says at this stage we conclude that the only solution is alpha equals beta equals gamma equals zero. Okay. If you can't see why, why that, why they can, why they're only concluding that the only solution is alpha is, is the trivial one, can you see that this matrix? Sorry, can you see that this matrix can be reduced to the identity matrix by further steps? If you can't see that, then you should actually just go ahead and do it. Do it in your head, or if you can't do it in your head, then do it on a piece of. Do it in a piece of paper. So I'll do it. I'll do it here, right? So we could go. We could now go. We could go row one. We can divide row one, row three, sorry, by minus six to change that thing to a one. Then once we've done that, we could do row two. Plus uh, that row three divided by minus six. Okay, and we could also we could also do that similar thing for row uh, one. Row one plus now. Um, Oh, actually, now we should do, to get rid of that 2, we can, should do a um, minus 2 times row 3 over minus 6, okay? So if we do that, we're going to get alpha, beta, gamma there, 0 there. We're going to get 0, 0, 1 in the bottom row. Next row will be 0, minus 7, 0. And then the top row will be 1, 4, 0, okay? So now we can do row 2 divided by minus 7, and then we could do row 1 minus um, this row 2 divided by minus 7 to get rid of that 4. Oh, not minus this, that. This row 1 minus 4 times the row 2 divided by minus 7. If we do that, we're going to get 1, 0, 0 at the top, 0, 1, 0 here, 0, 0, 1 here, alpha, beta, gamma equals 0. But that's the identity matrix, so it's just the same as alpha, beta, gamma equals 0. So that's saying alpha equals zero, beta equals zero, gamma equals zero, because of course this zero matrix, the zero vector here, was of course was, was always zero, zero, zero. Okay, it's not necessary. It, if you can see that it's going to give you over here, that you're going to be able to reduce everything to the identity matrix, then you can just you can just say oh, I can see that, and therefore I know that alpha, beta, alpha, beta, and gamma are going to have to be zero. Okay. So since that since all the zeros is the only solution, we can conclude that it's that it is linearly independent, right? There's no non-trivial solution, so there's no way of writing of writing something like this with no, with a non-zero scalar, and so there's no way of being able to rearrange this to get one of those vectors as a linear combination of the other two vectors. So the set S was the set S, the set S, the set S was independent. Okay. Now, I think I will stop now and make another video. Yes.